Hello, everybody. We're just going to wait for a few more attendees to arrive. And then we will get started. Welcome to those who have just joined. If you have just popped on in the past minute, uh, we will give it another couple of minutes and then we will be kicking off this webinar session. We'll just wait for a few more attendees to join and we'll get started. Okay, I'm impatient now, so I think we're going to get started. So thank you, everybody, for joining our session. Uh, we are delighted to be joined by Dr. Bellino, uh, who is the Director of Nursing at Elmira College. Uh, she will be taking us through all of the key info you need to know regarding studying an undergraduate degree uh, within the nursing department. Now, a couple of housekeeping rules, guys. If, as always, if you could keep your... Um, your computer or your phone on mute uh, until we get to the end of the session. If you do have any questions, do feel free to drop them in the chat box and we will endeavour to go through those at the end of our webinar. Uh, so with this session is recorded, just as an FYI, we will be circulating it with a lot of our partners who weren't able to attend live. So uh, that's just a kind of a, a heads up on that piece. So without further ado, Dr. Bellino, over to yourself. Hi, um, I'm, I'm Dr. Missy Bellino. I am the Director of Nurse Education at Elmira College. Um, this is my 21st year at Elmira College, so I'm starting to become a historian here at the college for all things Elmira because I think I'm one of the longer standing faculty members. Um, in terms of nurse education at Elmira College, um, we have a really nice program. We we had graduate on average 50 to 70 students. We did take a little hit with enrollment and I think this year's class is 36, but COVID kind of had a lot of influence on that enrollment. Um, our average class size is one to 30. So you might say, how would we get that with 70 students? We just open up a second section of a course. So we try to keep our classes small. We do have one exception um, in the senior year, they take a seminar course. And in the junior year, there's a, a seminar type lecture course where that all the students are together at regardless of the class size. Um, but for the most part, we're one to 30. Average clinical group size is one to five to six as a result of COVID lately. Um, we used to be one to seven or eight, but our clinical partners kind of had put some limits on us because of staffing issues. So it's actually benefited our students and our clinical instructors because they have nice group sizes to work with. Um, we have 100% employment rate after passing the NCLEX. Um, I'd like to say that was special to us, but I think in nursing right now, there's such a shortage in the United States of nurses. Um, basically, you, you get a job as long as you pass the NCLEX. That's how it goes. Um, we also have um, a very good graduate school placement rate. 
um, in terms of um, nurse practitioner programs, nurse anesthesia programs, um, nurse education, leadership, the, the typical graduate degrees that our students pursue. Um, I have not had a student turned down that has applied. They've all gotten into whatever programs they're trying to get into. Um, I think part of the reason we have a good graduate school placement rate is we do have a little bit of a liberal arts advantage. So sometimes nursing programs are focused um, purely on technical skills, especially your associate degree programs where you get your RN in two years. They're, they're going to focus on, you know, how do you keep a patient safe? Um, our students are in with the, the rest of the college, so they get the full college experience. They participate with organizations outside of nursing. Um, they're able to travel in the first two years that they're here. So they have that ability to get that global perspective that you don't get if you're just only focused on skills in your remote area. Um, and they also learn some excellent, you know, thinking, um, writing skills that are enhanced because of the different liberal arts courses they take um, towards their general education requirements. Um, and, and that really feeds into what nurses have to do, because we have to be able to think critically about complex health problems, um, appreciate global health and be globally minded, and provide unbiased care to all people. Um, we work really hard to make sure that um, our students are as current as possible with expectations from their employers in terms of um, care to patients. And ex for example, um, one of the things that we've had to navigate is the, the use of pronouns and how do you deal with that in the healthcare setting where your legal name may not be the name that you prefer to be called. So helping students navigate those difficult situations where they're not sure what to do. Um, other things that we get in terms of liberal arts courses, in addition to that global view are enhanced communication skills. Um, I have nursing majors who get theater minors, it's kind of cool. So they act in the school productions, but they also are nursing majors. And you know, one student who graduated a few years ago is in her, involved in community theater as a nurse. So that's something that being at a, a small liberal arts school gives you those chances to try out things that you might not get to try out otherwise. Um, and we also promote service and serve civic engagement both at the college level and the nursing level. So um, for example, in our community health course, um, one of the expectations that we have of our students is they spend a couple hours at the local food banks um, and learn what it's like to, to live with poverty and, you know, why people need adequate nutrition and how you can contribute to helping them get those services. So um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, we help our students be pretty um, open to a lot of different things when they graduate. Um, we do have admission and progression criteria. We do not have a separate admission to the major. That is special. Um, most nursing schools, you if it's a baccalaureate program in the United States, you come in and then you reapply to get into the nursing program and you have to make the cut. Um, at Elmira College, we do commit to if you come in as a nursing major, you are a nursing major. Um, you do have to meet the acceptance criteria for the college, but there's not a separate test or a, we don't do a tease. We don't do anything special to um, readmit you after you've been admitted. What we do do is progression criteria. So we require a 2.7 GPA um, throughout the program, have to get a C in all of the courses that are required for the major that aren't nursing. So our co-requisite courses, things like anatomy and physiology, uh, microbiology, chemistry. Um, you have to get at least a C plus in any required nursing prefix courses. And those are your clinical courses. Um, along with a couple theory courses that are required to graduate with a degree in nursing. Um, and in order to get into the first nursing course, you have to successfully complete two of the science courses required for the major. Um, usually it's anatomy one and two, as well as meet all of those criteria, have the 2.7 GPA um, and the, the grades required for, the, for, for courses in the major. Um, we do work with our freshmen a little bit. Occasionally, we'll have some not be successful in A&P 1, but they're able to go on and take A&P 2, and we, as a result, offer A&P 1 over the summer online so that those students who have kind of a bumpy road their first term can possibly fix it and stay on track. So we do try to um, do a little hand-holding with our freshmen when they come in and help them navigate college for the first time, and that's been... Um, a good strategy, it's kept the students on track and they've graduated on time. Um, we do have a policy, you can only take, you can only repeat a nursing course one time. 
And then if you fail at a, another nursing course, you would be dismissed from the major. So we, we don't allow them to fail courses, but as long as they can do well and only have one hiccup, they're okay. And, and the nursing failure is with only those nursing prefix courses. It doesn't count anatomy. So the student who failed anatomy didn't use up their one failure. They still have it when they take the nursing classes. Um, services that we provide, our faculty have an open door policy that can be good and bad, um, along with their scheduled office hours. So um, myself included, I do hand out my cell phone number to my students. Um, some people might ask me if I'm crazy, but I find they do not abuse it. They're very appropriate, and I only get text messages when they're desperate. So, and I most faculty feel that way. So that's just something that I think because we're so small, um, they, there is a small town feel here. So you you kind of know, I know all the students' names that are graduating this year as the director, which I don't think many directors know all their students' names by the time they graduate, but I have them in class because I still have some teaching expectations. Um, peer tutoring, we do in our nursing lab, as well as we're, we've just started at the college, a new SI program. And the SI program provides a, a student who's passed the class significantly well. They've gotten a good grade. Um, we pick them out. They offer one hour a week of supplemental education to the faculty. So they're kind of like a TA, only just a little bit different, more towards that tutoring end. Um, that's been a huge hit in our tougher nursing classes. So we had an SI in place for our medical surgical nursing course and for our foundational nursing courses. And that went really well. So we plan to continue that. Um, I think it it lessened the burden for the faculty in terms of having to meet with students um, to help them understand content. And uh, the students were more successful. It was a really good experience. Um, and this was the first year we've done that. We also use ATI testing services. So all of our students purchase um, ATI. Nursing programs use um, a combination of different programs. There's Kaplan, there's ATI, there's HESI. Um, ATI is what we found works well for us. We have that embedded in all of our clinical nursing courses, and it kind of gives us an earmark for how they're doing and progressing towards passing the NCLEX examination, which at the end of the day, to be a nurse, you have to pass the NCLEX. So that's one of our biggest hurdles. Um, we do support athletics and nursing. Um, I know some programs tell you if you're a nursing major, you can't be an athlete. That is not true here. Um, student athletes participate in the nursing major. They they get a little preference for clinical when they're in season. And um, quite honestly, many of our top nursing students are also the top athletes on the campus. So it's kind of a neat um, thing to have. They make great leaders. Um, clubs and activities. Students are active members of the college community, so they can be in any club they want to be in. Many nursing students are club officers amongst bunch of different clubs. We have a nursing club um, that promotes professionalism and service within the major. It also serves as a hub for um, communication about changes and things that happen within the major. Clinical experiences are done at various facilities. So even though we're kind of rural, we have several local facilities within a um, 20 to 30 minute drive. Um, and they range from we have um, small community hospitals, as well as we have a local trauma center, we have a local NICU, we have a local um, state psychiatric facility. So we're very fortunate that we have a variety of places to attend for clinical. And our curriculum is structured so that all of our students still participate in all the specialty areas. So um, basically they, they go from introduction to nursing to foundations in the nursing home, and then they progress to med surge, which is at our various hospital settings. Then they go to ICU and OB on those, they do six weeks in each area and then mental health. And then the senior year, they do six weeks on pediatrics, six weeks in a family focused med surge type course. And then they do 12 weeks in community health. And they, we end, with 180 hour capstone field experience that um, they do over the course of six weeks. Roughly, they work 36 hours a week with a staff nurse. They work that nurse's schedule. If the nurse works nights, they work nights. If the nurse works days, they work days. Um, they, they get to see what it's like to really work as a nurse. Um, by the end of that experience, they actually come out kind of ahead in terms of transitioning to practice, which we've gotten great feedback from our clinical partners that that's pretty effective.
Oops, am I going too far? So these, this is a picture, a panorama of our nursing lab. Um, we have two labs that are set up with beds, um, mannequins, all the, the medium fidelity mannequins that we need to basically practice what we do to people in the hospital. Um, we also have a high fidelity simulation lab. Um, we are fortunate to have an entire family. So we have a adult um, ICU mannequin. We have a female birthing mannequin. We have a pediatric mannequin, the, the infant mannequin. Um, and all of these different mannequins are um, able to do anything a human can do. They, they breathe, they talk, the child cries real tears. It's pretty impressive to see Andy when he's on. Um, and it's set up in a situation where um, it looks like a hospital room. The students go in, they perform a simulation, they're videoed. And then afterwards we go to another room where we debrief and watch the video um, and talk about what they, they did and didn't do and what they learned from the experience. Um, we do participate in interprofessional simulation. We have an articulation with Lee Con Medical School, which is just down the road from us. Um, they send us medical students, third year medical students to participate in a simulation with our third year nursing students. Um, it's a really interesting one. It's a rapid response. Um, so the students get to learn what it's like to work with other members of the healthcare team. And we've been expanding these interprofessional opportunities. So um, kind of neat. Um, most recently, we did a, um, one of my faculty organized a a disaster drill for an epidemic of um, meningitis. And it was really neat. We had local and um, regional experts from all over the area come in and our senior level, level nursing students got to run the um, pod where they came to get their antibiotics. So really neat experience. Um, we hope to expand our simulation opportunities as time goes on. Um, just a picture of some of our students working with one of the simulators, and that's in this the high fidelity sim lab. That's what the room looks like. Um, we do wear purple and gray, so those are the <laughs> what you'll look like if you come to school here. Um, and then this is our debriefing room. Um, Colleen is our current sim coordinator. Ironically, Tammy, who is the faculty during the simulation, will now be our new sim coordinator. So we do have somebody dedicated to that role that's um, working on providing more and more opportunities. So that's everything I have for you. So I'm open to questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Bellino. I think um, you've certainly painted a picture for me, you know, just getting in kind of imagery of the labs and the, the idea of this kind of simulation experience it sounds very exciting for the students. Uh, and also the field experience. And, and I know that's something that my team have personally been quite interested to learn a little bit more about. Um, it's just kind of those opportunities for kind of working in the local your hospitals and, and, and going on to kind of get, um, you know, paid, paid work, internships, all that sort of stuff. Can you share any further information on that? So the, the field experience I'm talking about is their final clinical experience. So they literally are partnered with a staff nurse. And by the right. end of that experience, they take a full patient load in most cases. Um, they don't have to, to graduate, but most of them are pushing towards that goal. So within six weeks, they're, they're really starting to feel what it's like to be a nurse. Um, our students do participate in internships, which is a little different. Between the junior and senior year, there are paid internships that you can apply for. We do have mm -hmm. one locally at Robert Packer Hospital in Sayre, and they pay them a fairly decent salary to come work for the summer. Um, they, they function more as a nurse's aide, but mm -hmm. they get added classes as well as observation experiences that you wouldn't get otherwise. And instead of being partnered with a nurse's aide, even though they can only do what a nurse's aide does, they partner them with a nurse. So they're getting to go in with that nurse while she does her assessments, um, see how she makes or he makes decisions, because that's really important to understand how they're they're making those yeah. decisions to provide mm -hmm. the care that they provide. So um, my daughter graduated from our program. So I'm a mom of an alum, so I can speak to outcomes. <laughs> um, she did participate in that internship. She loved it. She got a lot out of it. She did um, graduate past the NCLEX on the first try and worked at that local hospital as a result of her internship. Um, now she's left me and gone to Texas. But, yeah. um, you know, so I could actually see somebody progress through it. Um, she really has 
done well as a result of her education. So that's fantastic. I can see from a parent and a director. That's um yeah, I'm sure that's a uh, kind of you know nice for both the students and if any parents have joined us on this session. And with regards to that paid um internship that you've mentioned, there was one hospital locally. Do you think they get a lot of is there a lot of potential for kind of multiple students to potentially work there, or would that be a bit kind of ad hoc, do you think? It, it's gonna be competitive. So they, yeah. they have so many slots that they take and you <laughs> apply. Um they do look at GPA. Um, yeah. they want a minimum GPA. Uh, yeah. Basically, and this is one thing about this area that's kind of interesting is rural areas suffer the most during a nursing shortage. You would think that oh. urban areas would suffer more, but really, the, I think the rural areas, I mean, what ends up happening is salaries drive people's locations. So people are leaving our local hospitals to go work in the city where you can make a ton of money right now as a nurse. Um, oh, so that's oh. been challenging for our clinical partners to keep to retain these these students that they hire um so they try to do these internships so that hopefully they will come work for them and at least stay you know sure. they're hoping for that three to five year mark where before they decide they want to make a career change um, yeah and, and that's been challenging but that I know that there are internships um statewide like that it's not the only one it's just the only one in our local region sure thing I know. yeah I do see um, our other our other facilities do hire our students as nurses aides, so not an internship, but a paying job that they go work as nurses aides. Sure thing. Okay, thank you for that. One of the questions that actually has been written here um, that kind of added to that point was discussing, um, are students allowed to hop to other states within the US for internship or will they only stay in Elmira to get more exposure? Well, because we're a border state, we already hop the border. So our students go to clinical in PA and New York um, because the, the way we're located is, um, I actually live in Pennsylvania <laughs> and I work in New York. So oh, wow. it's yeah. that much of a border town. Yeah. So because of that, um, we, most of our faculty, my faculty have to be licensed in both states and we, we do our clinical to both of those states. In terms of that internship, like the field experience internships, um, you can, um, go to different states. I, I do have students go home and they do it in their, their home state. Um, in terms of our field experience, I am able to attempt to place them out of state, but it, again, that will depend on the Nurse Practice Act in that state. Um, I was able to successfully place a student in California during COVID. Um, that did work out, but that's unusual. Um, Usually it's it's going to be within our local region, PA, New York is where I'm able to get students in. And we also compete with other schools. So if you're trying, like um, occasionally I'll have students try to go to New Hampshire, <laughs> Massachusetts, you know, the New England area. Um, sometimes I have kids from the city, like from New York that want to go back to the city. Mm -hmm. And that's really competitive. That's hard. You you kind of have to know somebody for that to work out. Right. I, I've had yeah. a, a couple students pull it off, but they've had a mom or a dad in the facility that kind of pulled some strings and got sure them thing. in. Okay, thank you for clearing that one up for me. Uh, so apologies if some of this is already covered. I'm just, do Elmira accept international students? Well, I'd, I'd like to say yes, because that's the whole nature of this. Call. Right. <laughs> um, Charles, an average working hours per week during the study period. And the average average per hour wages approximately that a student might expect to, to get uh, if they're in an international student studying during an internship. So the, the internship option, if you did get an internship, it would be based on that facility. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, I mean, at $17, $18 an hour would be my guess. Uh, minimum yeah. wage in New York State is 15 so mm -hmm. it's better than minimum, but they, they still are providing a lot of support, so they don't pay tons of money for that. Um, in terms of, what was the other part? Uh, it was about, sorry, I moved on there. Oh, it was just saying the average average hour and average salary per hour uh, during internships and average working hours per week. So the working hours per week, if it's an internship, they, generally it's a full time, like it's in the summer, it's not during when school's on. So mm -hmm. if they do an internship, it's in the summer, it's usually full time working hours. Um, that's what I've seen them do. In terms of like, if you did like 
If you worked as a nurse's aide, that would be independent. It depends on the student. We do have sure. students who work. I do have part-time students. I have parents. Um, you know, they're they're working full-time jobs and going to school full-time. I'm not sure how they do yeah. it, but they do pull yeah. it off. Um, but that's all independent. That's their something they choose to do. Sure thing. Okay, thank you for answering that one. Uh, so I've been asked here, are Elmira connected with the Registered Nurses Association? We so, are accredited by ASIN, the Accreditation Commission on Nursing in the United States, as well as we have membership with AACN and the NLN. Fantastic. There you go. That was quite a, quite a specific one for you there. <laughs> um, tuition fees. So, um, I mean, I can answer that one for you guys. On average, I believe that the current fees are circa for you guys around 20,000 per year. Uh, we are still offering the scholarship for international students, which is $17,000 per year. Um, not sure how kind of uh, it, 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 you are, Dr. Bellino, with fees for the international students, which is why I, I, I dipped in there. Do you accept grade 12 students? Yes, these are students that are applying to do an undergrad course. So I'd say yes to that one. What are the career opportunities after nursing graduation at Elmira? Tons. I mean, they <laughs> basically, anywhere they hire a nurse, you can work as a nurse. Um, my own career, I worked as a step-down nurse for several years. I went into a float pool. I had a license as a nurse practitioner, um, ended up in education after I had four kids in five years. And now wow. I work as a nurse administrator um, and still teach. I, I think everybody's path can be very different. And the neat thing about nursing, I would say, is that you can kind of make your career fit your needs. Um, I don't mm. know too many careers I could have done what I did um, in the time that I did it. So I, I think nursing is wide open in terms of opportunities. Um, I have nurse friends who work in insurance companies. They they do insurance assessments. I have nurse friends who are now lawyers. Um, basically, you can choose to do what you want. I would say the highest paying job in nursing is probably nurse anesthetist. Um, they, they make the highest salary. Um, probably a couple hundred thousand once they're experienced. And, um, you know, they we've had probably in the 21 years I've been here, I've had three nurse anesthetists come from our program. And they were all students that did not surprise me. They were very focused. It's kind mm -hmm. of a niche nursing field. You have to really like just giving drugs. Um, <laughs> but, but we do have three in my time here that did do, go on to do that. Highly competitive. I would yeah. say I have tons of nurse practitioners. Um, nurse practitioners do very well. Um, they make good salaries and they all love their jobs, the ones that I talk to. So that's very motivating, I'm sure, for everyone that's on the call. Um, so next question is, what is the minimum age to apply? Is there? A, do you accept 17 year olds or would it be for 18 plus? Um, they, they just need <laughs> to be 18 when they go to the hospital clinical. So, but that doesn't happen till the sophomore year. So hypothetically, you could be 17 as a, as a freshman and be fine. Mm -hmm. okay. But I do believe to work in the, like in the hospital setting, I believe you have to be 18. Sure. Okay. Thank you for Just that. For, I mean, it's never come up that the youngest I've had has been 17 and they turned 18 yeah. before the first mm -hmm. clinical, which doesn't start until um, the second term of the sophomore year. So okay. we've never run into somebody who didn't make it. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you for that. Uh, how many intakes? So I believe you guys just do the January and the August. Is that correct? Well, we do take students in January, but they we don't have a January nursing cohort. So if you come in right. in January, you'll be here for a little bit. It depends on if you have credits. If you don't have any credits and you come in in January, you'll be here a little longer than four years. It works out to four, what, an extra term. If you come in with credits and can come into the sophomore class, like if you have the two sciences and, you know, then yeah. you could. So usually I would say our traditional students start in September, right. the August, okay. September start date. Um, the January start date, you just have to keep in mind the way the nursing program works, it's kind of lockstep in terms of the nursing progression. Sure thing. Okay, brilliant. Well, guys, we are working on that August fall intake at the moment. 
I don't have the deadline at the top of my head, but one of my guys are going to ping that over to me shortly. So um, for everyone that's on the call that's getting inspired and wants to apply, um, obviously we'd encourage you to do so earlier rather than later. Uh, we know it can take a bit of time to process documents and obviously get your I-20s and try and get you guys your visa appointments. Um, so moving on to other questions, are transfer options available for students from other universities for your course? Um, we do accept transfer students that the rules would apply with the registrar as far as what transfers in and what doesn't transfer. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, I have had transfer students, many that come from colleges that they they didn't make the nursing cut. So they got yeah. told no. Um, so then they apply with us. They're a good student. They just didn't make the top 40. And um, <laughs> those students, if they have the two sciences and the the right the GPAs, the grades, they can come into our sophomore year and only be here three years. Sure thing. Okay. It gives them a little advanced placement, but they have to have the 24 credits and the two sciences and what we would expect okay. from a freshman. Sure. And I think, guys, when it comes to transfers, it'll just be on a kind of case by case basis. So send over mm -hmm. your applications and we can kind of reach out to the team and Patrick, who's the admissions director, and he can guide us on those cases. Um, yeah. Does a student required to be registered before applying? So, Jimmy, um, your message there, um, in case you're unclear on the process and if you don't currently have a contract with us, uh, I would uh, encourage you to reach out to your representative who invited you to this session uh, and we will set you up with a contract um, whereby you can technically recruit on behalf of uh, the nursing programme here at Elmira. Uh, and at that point, we can then guide you in terms of all the uh, key required documents you would need to apply for the course uh, and then we will um, obviously guide you as and when your, your student or yourself are, are applying. Um, that does lead me on to the required documents which I see somebody asked so um, please add if there's anything I've missed here Dr Valero but we're looking for a GPA of around 2.9 uh, from international students. Um, I believe an IELTS score of around 6 which is a Duolingo 100 PTE 60. Uh, we need an academic letter of recommendation and we do need a student who has studied one year of maths, biology and chemistry, as well as a statement of purpose. Anything else there? <laughs> that pop out there? That sounds right. Oh, yeah, great. OK. Uh, but again, guys, you know, reach out to your representative. Oh, OK. One of my guys has just pinged me and said, bank statement. Don't forget your financial documents, which we would need in order to prove that we, you know, you can cover your costs while you're, you're studying them. Uh, so on to the next question. Sorry, they're coming in thick and fast now, Dr. Valine. Um, can a nursing student stay outside of the campus on request of the parents? So we know undergrad, most of the undergrad students actually do stay on the campus. Is there any exceptions with your students or, you know, is there flexibility there? Typically, know? it depends on, they allow students who live locally to stay off campus, but if you're not... Right. Somebody yeah. who lives locally, generally speaking, you're expected to live on campus if sure. it, for that freshman year. Um, I, I'm sure, you know, depending on the situation, there's always situations that change rules. But mm -hmm. typically, if it's it's an 18 year old student, they want them on campus. That's sure. usually what they encourage unless they yeah. live locally and can commute. And that's a different student. OK, so guys, I mean, I think if, you, if you're if you not already familiar and you haven't already had the whole of Elmira presented to some of you, uh, there are loads of different housing options um, on campus and, you know, some really beautiful apartments that have fireplaces and ensuite and, you know, look very kind of uh, luxurious and lovely, as well as slightly more uh, kind of cost effective budget options. So there is a lot of there are a lot of alternatives for your students or indeed if you are, you are a student with us. Um, for you to stay on the campus according to your budget and what you're looking for. So uh, don't be don't be scared. And actually, I would say that as an international student coming to the US for the first time, connecting and living on, on site with lots of other international students, is probably a really lovely experience. Um, I'm sure you, it's a nice opportunity to make some friends and um, yeah, become familiar with your, your surroundings. So my younger okay. daughter lives on campus and she, her yeah. roommate is from Japan. Oh, so she really? lives with a Japanese international student and they live in a suite together and they really have a good time. 
Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I studied in the UK and I, I stayed on, it's certainly like in a campus. And I think you get much more of a university experience from that rather than being plonked in a city, which is quite anonymous. You know, you, it must it might be kind of harder to make friends. Um, and, and also, I think international students can often kind of, you know, uh, connect with their, their same kind of um, group of people that might have come from the same country. Whereas when you're on campus, you're mixed with everyone and it's a really great opportunity to kind of... Um, yeah, diversify your, your your networks and your connections. So on to the last couple of questions here. Uh, I've got Dr. Daniel here. I'm a little confused when you said you need to pass some courses before going into nursing proper. Please, does it mean a student from high school, example from Nigeria, can't be admitted directly into nursing? I think I think what uh, Dr. Lino was saying was that you need to meet the certain requirements to get onto the course. Uh, so as long as you can meet those requirements, then they need to maintain a certain GPA in order to not be booted off. <laughs> in right. other words, uh, what was that GPA again? Was it 2.7? 2.7. Yeah. A 2.7 while they're here. Yeah. Okay. And that so includes just... all of their courses, not just their nursing courses. So sometimes students take a class that is, they call a grade booster, but you know, that's fine. They're allowed to have those mixed in with that GPA option. But the, the big things we look at are those, you know, we want to see C's in all those science classes. Um, we need safe nurses. So we're trying to ensure safety. Sure thing. Okay. So thank you for that. There's been a few questions repeating the age limit piece. So guys, it sounds like 17 is accepted, but no younger than that. Uh, right. But again, send over your applicant and we'll we'll look at them on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, do you accept nursing diploma as high school equivalency? Does that make any sense? I don't know what that means. No. Simon, if you can elaborate uh, with a bit more detail in terms of what you mean from your market. Uh, what would be the student versus faculty strength number of students per one faculty for nursing? That was covered in the PPT. Uh, so we will pass that. Can students with a first degree in an unrelated program apply for a nursing program? Yes, um, actually, if they have an a, like a a transferable degree, we actually have it. If they're they come in with a bachelor's degree in another um, major, maybe English, and they come in with that bachelor's degree, it actually makes them so they don't have to take the general education credits here at Elmira College. They can take just nursing and do it and and you know especially and if they have the two sciences they mm. could actually do it in three years if they have anatomy one and two done already before they came in it just depends on what their previous degree was sometimes I get uh, transfers I have a couple now one was a um, exercise science major so he had the sci a lot of the science classes mm. because he transferred in with a major that had those science classes and he was able to kind of move ahead and start in the sophomore year. Cool thing. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for that. And then just a final question that's not quite clear on this one. Just it suggests, is, is there any other way to cover expenses by any other loans or scholarships other than that $17,000 that we're offering? I'm guessing this might not be your remit Dr. Blue, no, okay. Um, so yeah, to that last question, uh, as far as it stands, guys, we offer a significant scholarship on the original tuition fees. Uh, so it does work out to be circa 20,000 per year. Um, and that that's the current scholarship in place is the 17,000. There's no extra costs at the moment on top of that. Um, so that covers all of the questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Blurino. And actually, one thing I would like to do as a kind of take out from this session is uh, myself, you, and our lovely marketing lady, Chandy, could put together a one pager that's focused specifically on the content you've covered for the, on this session. So just a little snapshot that we can then share with all of our um, clients that have been on the call uh, in terms of just kind of the key, key takeouts of this call, really. Um, but guys, if you do have any further questions, please reach out to your BD. Uh, or indeed myself, uh, as the head of the business development team, I'm happy to, to assist you where I can. Um, thank you, Chani, for setting it all up. Uh, and thank you again, Dr. Florino, for sharing all of your, your insights and knowledge with us. We will leave it there for now, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, we will follow up with you Thank all you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you.